Welcome to the Sleep Drunk Declassified Travel Guide, another Sleep Drunk special. If you're hearing this when it comes out, I am most likely either A, at some point in air transit, or B, just recently landed in the old US of A. So we pre-recorded this two weeks earlier, because it's a little hard to set up a recording studio in economy class. Hope you can forgive us. So today we're going to be talking about travel and our various ways of traveling. I have one way I prefer, Alex has his, um, a way he prefers. So Alex, are you ready to talk about traveling and all of the headaches and pleasures that it brings? Let's do it. All right. So I'll start out with um, air travel. Um, for context, I most of my flights are long haul international flights, transatlantic, um, 14 hours plus. So keep that in mind. I do do a little bit of domestic flying, but I normally have at minimum two international flights per year. And so the way I've structured this, I've broken it down to a few different stages. Um, the first stage is prepping for the flight. And I think this is something that not enough people do and more people need to do. Um, first off, be purposeful when you pack. PP. Always follow PP. Purposeful packing. Always have PP Always on have the mind. PP. PP on the mind. PP in your luggage. It's really important. Um, I think one of my best advice for this, especially for international flyers, for the love of God, wear your bag ahead of time. I'm tired of standing in the freaking check-in line, waiting for some people to, like, shuffle around a bunch of crap and, like, figure out what's what. Just, like, if you fly more than... If you, if you fly more than once per year, just get a package scale. They're, like, 7 to $10. And they make, they, make, they make your life so much easier. And also, always, I recommend going... Be- aim to be below your weight limit. Like, aim to be half a kilogram or whatever that is in pounds um, below your weight limit because sometimes airport scales aren't the most accurate, and so you can end up being overcharged. And it also gives you a bit of leeway if you have to, like, throw something in last minute. So always aim to have your stuff be lower than your limit. And also, this is something I always do. I always, in my carry which I'll talk about later, actually I'll talk about it after this, but let's start with this. I always pack a, for this big for long haul flights, a pair of pajama pants and a comfortable outer layer. I have like a North Face fleece I like to wear. And so I'll just bring like a light cotton pair of um, lounge pants. It makes flying so much easier. Like I can't imagine people who will clock out a 14 hour flight in jeans. I've seen it done. It sounds like hell. And Question. Yes. A lot of people, actually for me, I, I, I just like prefer to always be in regular clothes but anyway um I've, I've seen a lot of people advise to pack enough things in their carry-on to you know last you a full 24 to 48 hours without any other baggage like you know sample size um toothpaste and a toothbrush oh, yeah. and uh, a few changes yeah. of clothes is that something you yeah. recommend i'm getting into that get in the way so for me that's something where since this you think so since I fly long haul most of the time, I'll give you a little package of toiletries. If you know it's gonna happen, you don't have to. But I always pack the um, extra medications. I will pack some comfortable clothes and I'll pack my essentials because I don't need much to get through a day. And I find that like yes, if your luggage gets lost, gets lost, that sucks. But it's you can hedge a bit and it will be super likely. But yeah, I would recommend at least bring some minimums like. I I always like we get so since again we we fly Emirates a lot because the loyalty is decent but it's all they're just it's just comfortable and we like it and so they will always give you a little kit of things but uh, yeah you you should do that if you know your airline won't be providing you with that kind of stuff I would definitely pack that stuff but I also always bring a little vial of medications with uh, let me think I keep stomach medications a lot of those because honestly having an upset stomach on a plane is the worst it's awful oh, I can imagine like. Like headaches, I can deal with. Body aches, I can deal with. Upset stomach is just a no. It's just a no. But yeah, so I always no. have in excess of stomach medications. I will bring extra strength cold medication, like the stuff that you have to have an ID to get because that works. Um, allergy medications because I have really bad allergies, and I'm forgetting something. Painkillers, just regular like Tylenol or whatever works for you. Um, Ibuprofen, boy. I just like honestly Tylenol works quite well for me. Um, so I just get it. It's what I have. Acetaminophen, big gay. Actually, everyone else is paracetamol, Alex. So, um, get it right, you peasant. <laughs> but like, it's that doesn't change the fact that it's garbage. It does. It works fine for me. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but like, oh, no, it's just medications like work better. Objectively, worse stuff for works you better. Than ibuprofen. But yeah, just pack your preferred pain medication. 
and <laughs> heroin. <laughs> yes, just bring a needle. <laughs> just bring a needle, just like you're in the plane. The kids cry. Just give me a second. Just <laughs> yo, get that baby some Indica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm bringing Ambien to force feed to babies. Um, I'll talk more about it with babies later. Uh, you know what? If it's safe to get a kid Ambien, I think my cousin gave my kid, um, her her child codeine once. The doctor prescribed it, oh. but that kid, I saw him. He was he um, he took he us on us on us peons and went away to Venus. He's a star, so he got a neutron on his pinky. He's moonwalking, and his Christian Louboutin's bleeding. He was smoking rune, ro- rune rocks, but I'm sure he was feeling the ceiling. Stop. Kodak. Stop whatever it. that verse number was. <laughs> but Stop yeah, it. I'll always bring some spare medications. No, it's because you never know when someone else might need them, and it's like you can just be a nice guy, let them give give him some. You know, it's always good. And no, dude. Be a dick. <laughs> like, no. Fuck you and your diarrhea. <laughs> I don't care if you splash on me. I'm not giving you a, a grain of this Pepto-Bismol. Because I get pill form Pepto. Because the liquid, just why? Just get it in a pill. Yeah, really why? Yeah. So, and also, in, in the topic of carry-on packing, I always make sure... When, you, when you're packing entertainment, because I think everyone should pack entertainment if it's a longer flight... People have a tendency to overpack, especially in entertainment. I did this when I was younger. Like, I would bring, like, everything that I could. Because I was worried, oh, it's, like, 14 hours. But in reality, it's not that. It doesn't seem that long. What I found is that very Gotta long that flights, DS, dude. like, very long flights feel shorter than short flights. It's weird, but, like, it's true. Like, for me, 14-hour flights pass faster than five-hour flights. But so, I have never been able to take a flight, like, in the modern day. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, I would always want to just bring my phone or my laptop or something. My mom would always be like, no, you can't have that. But I mean, I would just bring my laptop. Yeah. That would be more than enough See, for me. normally what I bring is, for me, my carry-on. Also, this is a bit on the heavy side. But an example of what mine would be. I have my medications. I also have like, my inhaler and my EpiPen because I should have them. I have my Bose Q35s. Chargers, I'll bring my Switch and my laptop. And maybe a book if I'm feeling it. And that is actually on the heavier side, honestly. And I'd recommend bringing less. But it's just that I swap between the, like my laptop, and my switch. I mean, on my last, on the last flight I took, I clocked in nine hours straight and started Valley on the switch, which was wonderful time, and also might have given me an RSI. But yeah, what is that? <laughs> Repetitive strain injury. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I am currently experiencing shooting pains in my wrist. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, but, that's not good. That's like a whole lot of carpal tunnel. Yeah, yeah, I'll live. And you also, know, at one point in my, in my life, I was actually developing carpal tunnel from using my computer at a weird like angle, and I had to account for that and fix oh, my yeah, it can have a mouse pad. Yeah, um, our size are dangerous. Be, be aware of them. Message from Sleep Trunk. <laughs> I don't know which episode we recorded before this now. Um, and when you preload, so I also like to preload entertainment on my phone because I honestly just I like watching stuff on my phone. I don't know, like it's just like I can move around a lot more and I can get more comfortable. But like for example. If you use Netflix, and most people do nowadays, um, they have an option to download stuff. Download a bunch, you know, download music on Spotify. I have always keep podcasts downloaded. And make sure that you have a diverse set of entertainment. I think that's important. Because that's what helps pass the time quickly. It's like, opposed to having three seasons of one show, have a few seasons of a few different shows. Because that way, like, cause you, you'd be surprised how quickly you get bored of things, especially on planes, because it's an interesting thing, or like, just- being... Mm-hmm. Download some low power games like Minecraft oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, of course, of course. Like I said, have a have a nice bit of diversity. Like I said, I had my Switch. I downloaded some anime. Downloaded it. Download. Downloaded. Did did did. Um, I downloaded, downloaded some it. like I think it was some SVU. So I had a, I had a bunch of different stuff, and that makes the thing go. That makes everything go by fa- a lot quicker. And next step in our prep stage is check it online. Um, just, just do it. Just do it. And if you use Google Wallet or Apple Wallet or Apple Pay or Google Wallet, whatever. If you use those apps, you Google can... Google Pay, yeah. Apple Pay. Uh, yeah, so if you use those payment... Um, and I'm thinking about the wallet app specifically, because you can... I know at least it's, for it, iPhones... They merged it. It's all, it's all Google Pay. Okay, yeah, so... There's, it, so, there's no more Google Wallet. Okay, yeah, yeah, they did get rid of Google Wallet, don't they? But so if you use Apple Wallet or Google Pay, you can... Um, some airlines are allowed to have a mobile boarding pass, which saves a lot of time in fumbling at counters, if your airline allows it. I'd look into it and get it, because it's quite convenient. Um, and also... Try and schedule transportation to the airport beforehand. It's pretty, pretty much a no-brainer, but people forget it. So here's your here's your warning. And also, if you're traveling internationally, this is actually really important. Have a dedicated passport holder. Like, have a dedicated passport holder with, like, a oh, few definitely. things. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I had one. Yeah. I just, like, hung it from my neck inside my shirt. That way someone can't go up to me and grab it. 
so like it was on me at all times with money and everything yeah see i would see in mine i keep money a sim card and a pen having a pen is really important also travel with multiple pens i never kept yeah, I mine I on mine me well. because i'm just pretty good about keeping it tr- keeping track of it because also see i don't put my bag in the overhead i put it under my feet and so i keep it in yeah, my bag too. never touch the overhead because if you the overhead is not only time inefficient but it's like if you ever want anything like yeah, why like, even bring the bag on the plane because yeah. if you ever want anything out of it then you have to go get in exactly. everyone's way just fumble around with the bag mid-flight oh the seatbelt lights on get the oh, lights down yep, yep. yeah I'll talk about seatbelt lights seat later because I have I have things I need to say about seatbelt lights, but <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> I, have, I have lots of pens. Pens are really useful, um, and also do your due diligence because about regarding airline and airport policy. Um, like for example, things like lots of airlines will have restrictions on certain items. Like if you have a Galaxy S7 um, Note Seven, you can't fly with it. You just can't. It'll explode. <laughs> um, and also here's a here's a trick I I, I learned about online. Um, you can't bring a water bottle through your security, but you can bring an empty bottle and some tea bags if you feel like it, and then have people in the plane give you hot water if you don't want the plain tea. So if that's your thing, bring some. And, or mm-hmm. you could you could do what I saw, it, it, the total malicious compliance story, but I saw this online. This this old woman was told that she couldn't have um, a bottle of water on the plane. She, she's like, okay, goes home. Gets a bottle of water, throws that yeah. in the freezer, right? And brings so it now she ice. has a bottle of ice. And she brings it. And she's it. like, yeah, she goes through and they start arguing with her. She's like, it's not water, it's ice. You told me I couldn't have a bottle of liquid. It's not liquid. Yeah, no, you and can And they do let that. her through. You can totally do that. People do it. Go ahead. Or bring an empty bottle. Either way, like, that's very much doable. Go ahead and do it. Because TSA is annoying. And so now that you've prepared, let's go to the airport. So you're in the airport now. First and foremost thing, don't be a dick. Not in the lines. Not to General the staff, not to anyone, because everyone there hates being there. No one likes air travel, or at least being in airports. Everyone hates it there. They hate it just as much as you do. They hate it. So don't be a dick. Be nice. If an issue comes up, like, hey, just talk it out. Be reasonable. Don't be a dick. And also, don't try to accidentally enter a shorter line. Like, oh, I, I'm in economy. This is the first class line. Oh, I didn't know. Don't do that. Wait your turn. Just and also, if you're traveling with a lot of luggage, like traveling to like India particularly, people will bring just a Can't. ton of luggage because of import taxes. People like to smuggle stuff in for their families. But keep all your luggage in order, one place to the side. Don't get in the way of things. Don't hassle the boarding agent. They're they're nice. And in security, have your documents ready. Have. Keep a mental list of everything you need to remove. And for those of you who don't know, generally it's anything with a battery you take out of your carry-on. Shoes, belts, headphones, sometimes that specific stuff. Um, but also pack, make sure you pack your carry-on in such a way that it's easy to remove things. And what I like to do is if I can, I will start unzipping things and opening stuff up a bit in the lines just so when I get to the um, security, I can just get everything out, put it in the um, bin, send it through the x-ray, and I'm out. So always pre-prepare um, if you can, to get through security as quickly as possible. And in security, don't freak out. You'll be fine. It's not that big a deal. Just, like, generally, don't freak out. So, once you get to the gate, so, at this point, you've gotten through security. Hopefully, you found your gate. If you haven't, uh, that's rough, but find your gate. Um, once you're at the gate, A, don't cut. Just don't, don't be a dick. Wait your turn. And if you can... Take out what you want in the flight. Like, for example, like, you know, your laptop, headphones, whatever. Take that stuff out before you board and have it with you if you can carry it. And that's actually why another reason I like to keep, like, my fleece jacket is I can just kind of bundle everything in the fleece and then walk around like a hobo and just kind of keep it all in one place. But if you can, take that stuff out of, out ahead of time before you sit down to make so use. That way, if you need to, you can put stuff in the overhead and just have what you need right there. And also, don't try to steal seats in the plane. Come on. You very oh, well God. know where your seat yeah. is. Like, if you need to rearrange, sit in your designated seat and just maybe ask someone. And lost, like, if someone asks me to change seats and it's reasonable, I'll do it. I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, and this is one that I'm gonna get some flack for. I will, but for the love of Fly. God, control your kids, please. I get it. I know kids are are crazy. They're awful, but just, just please. If your kids are making a bit of a ruckus, at least do something. Like, for context, on my flight over here to India, I had an aisle seat, and in the I was on like the so I was I was on a three row plane, 
there was like three, four, and three. And so I was on the left side of the plane at the aisle seat. And in the row next to me, right, in the, in the four set, there was a family of four. And they had two kids. One maybe like, was maybe like six. I'm going to guess that it was like 10 or 11. And the six-year-old just fucking like screaming and complaining and about how the games on his in-flight entertainment system didn't work. And his parents were just sitting there, just staring into the distance. Like, not even just kind of like, hey, quiet down. Just, I get it to an extent. Kids are hard to control. I've been that kid before. But just if you can, please try and rein them in a little bit. Just a bit. Give them some Ambien. Give them a Xanax or two. Hit them with something really heavy to make to knock them out for a bit. Um, if you do this, don't. But like, you just you know, get them to calm down, <laughs> please, please. So, a few, few more, few last, few more things before I before I end this bit off. Um, depending on length of the flight, if you bring a change of clothes, just change towards the start. Like, the moment you're in the air, plan it out after the big bathroom rush. Because, like, in a plane, there's a few different bathroom rushes, right? They'll be right before landing, right after takeoff, and before and after the meals. If, depending on how many, if, if they serve a meal or whatever, however much they do. So, like, plan plan a designated time. Normally, if you fly an airline a lot, like, for example, we fly Emirates all the time. Like, that's our go-to. You can kind of, like, tell when what's going to be where. So, plan accordingly. Um, once again, be asked to the staff, and when you're in the plane, um, just a few wellness tips. Make sure to get up and walk around a, little, little, um, a bit, especially if it is a long haul flight. Like, I always like to get up every hour or two to walk around a little bit, like, do some calf lifts, just kind of keep the blood flowing in your legs. Um, take off, if you're wearing a watch, take it off, um, because, like, your wrist can swell in the air, and it's just a little uncomfortable. Um, rotate through entertainment. Don't ask dumb questions. Like, if it's something basic, like, I don't know. Are we there yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> or like um, something that's already been explained. Just don't ask dumb questions. You should be able to tell. Um, and hydrate or dehydrate. Actually, hydrating on a plane is super important. Like because since the air is drier, you dehydrate a lot more quickly. And this is this is compounded if you drink on the plane, which you shouldn't do. Because actually, like it impacts you more and makes it hard to get off jet lag. But for example, my brother, when we were flying to the States last summer, was next to a very um, thick man who really liked whiskey. Um, the, the, the hostess asks, hey, would you like anything for breakfast? His response, Coke and whiskey. <laughs> it's like, can I get a whiskey? I'm what, like, a, Dude. what a way to start your day. <laughs> like, chill out. <laughs> he had like five servings of whiskey and they had to cut him off. <laughs> Like in a plane, alcohol is more impactful because it's just like altitudes and altitudes and just like, yeah, Hi- hydrate or dehydrate. Keep the alcohol consumption reasonable. Glass or two, beer or two, you're fine. But don't don't be the guy that downs seven whiskeys and a couple beers. <laughs> um, and then once you land, don't stand up until like it's okay to stand up. It's not going to make things go any faster. Come on, like. Wait till the seatbelt signs off. Don't be that guy. And, like, don't just kind of stand in the aisle and wait to leave. Just wait your turn. Don't be a dick. And also in immigration, don't freak out. Just be nice to everyone. Don't be a dick. And, yeah, hopefully you got to your destination safely and you gave your kids drugs. But seriously, if you have to drug your kids. So Alex, how about some road tripping advice? Just pick my lock again. I will definitely right, know so which episode you're this after. <laughs> Wait, what? Now, so now they'll definitely know which episode we recorded this after. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So, road tripping. Oh boy. So, honestly, for me, riding in a car is not like an issue like for a lot of people it's it's a lot to ask for them to sit in a car for hours on it which is understandable it's just something i don't have an issue with so i suggest that you bring whatever you need to make it comfortable but do be space conscious because you have to have so much with you when you road trip especially if you're bringing camping gear and fishing gear Mm -hmm. and like any other gear because what are you going to do when you get to where you're going but also Keep in mind that it's also not all about the destination. Like, there's a reason why you're road tripping. It, like, if you're road tripping, it's 
for the journey, right? Yeah. So if, if you're not into the journey, then I wouldn't recommend road tripping. You're not going to like it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, uh, where do I even start? I'll, I can have, some, do, I'll I can talk about spend... the kind of trips you take for starters. Okay, like. so my my main achievement in the road tripping world is a two week trip where my brother and I left in his Nissan Xterra uh, and went across America. Basically, we didn't make it all the way to the West Coast, but that wasn't our goal. So um, let's see we we have grandparents that are in Southern Ohio or in Central Virginia. I'm just gonna yeah whatever you know put that out there and. We, I had already went to central or southern Ohio to visit my grandparents with my mother. So for me, it was three weeks, but I was just kind of there visiting family for a week. And then my brother, um, a week later, came out and met me. And then from there, we spent one night there in Ohio. And then we left from Ohio and took I-64 to St. Louis and then I-70 out to Kansas City. And then we stayed in Kansas City. And then we took I-70 over to Colorado, got off on US 24, and then went down to Colorado Springs and stayed at a campground in that area near Pikes Peak, went and did all that, and then we took I-25 up through Denver, beautiful city, um, and then got off on US 287, which is what I would call the loneliest road in America. Like, it is truly amazing, that road. I would... I would kill to could to go back up that road. It's just, it's it's amazing, hmm. especially through Wyoming. Um, so we we took it uh, up to I eighty, and then it follows I eighty for a, a long way, and then we got off on also something that I wish we had on the East Coast. Oh my God! So the interstates out there are so, uh, just open that. Hmm they set the speed limits to you know some things that are way higher like yeah. 85 yeah and I then like the, there's a truck speed limit which is like 75 or something but also they set a minimum speed limit so you can't be the jack out there going 35 on the road because there is legally a minimum speed limit which is posted as 45. Hmm. yeah i remember so I think a while ago i took a trip out to tennessee and we finished off in illinois and then we came back and we saw a couple of those yeah and also, the two-lane roads are so long and desolate that the speed limit is generally 70 miles an hour. And it is honestly so fun to go 70 miles, or like everyone goes 80 because, you know, that's Over. just what you do, yeah. to go 80 miles an hour down a two-lane road. <laughs> and like 287 through Wyoming, it's just so open. Like there's nothing there for hundreds of miles. Ooh. But anyway... We stopped in Lander at some, you know, hole in the wall motel. And then, I, well, I mean, I could talk about my trip for, uh, for a whole nother episode, but I'm just going to go to all of our destinations, I guess. From there, we made it to West Yellowstone, went through Yellowstone National Park. Way too many people there. Um, yeah. Then from there, we stayed with a friend in the the Big Sky General Area. We went camping at a campground uh, over off 287 south of Ennis. I forget what it was called. It was like, I don't know. doesn't matter. Got up on I-90 and took that out to Missoula and then got off on 93 and took that up to Kalispell. Stayed there before we were going to enter Glacier. Spent two nights in Glacier National Park. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And then we took another desolate highway. I believe it was US-89 um, through Great Falls and then took 87 over to another place and then oh my god montana state route 200 absolutely nothing across that whole state um let's see 80 50, uh, 59 state route 59 to mile city state of mile city and then we just basically followed i-94 back for the most part i mean we stopped in duluth and uh we went through bloomington indianapolis Cincinnati and then back to Southern Ohio stayed with the grandparents for another night and then came back to Virginia so did you so I would oh, say yeah. it's pretty long hard show. yeah so did you plan out like all of your different stops or like did you plan out stuff along so, the way or so yeah we we didn't we, we knew the route that we were going to take vaguely mm -hmm. um 
and we knew like the the big destinations that we wanted to go to but the 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 places that we stayed we would just find those on the way and just sort of like go on you know like google and just find whichever hotel was cheapest and do all of that work on their campsite and whatnot so definitely have a phone with you you know be able to research where you're going um as i mentioned on the episode that we just recorded before this having radio communications in the car is absolutely wonderful if you need like information from the locals having a ham radio is so nice you can just go ask them what, what like things and they'll they'll be able to give you a, a good answer because you know they're locals yeah and generally people in the ham radio community are very very nice they're, they don't care that you're on their you know radio repeater even though they're locals and you're you're you no. are a tourist you're just passing through mm-hmm. um but generally they're open to it I, I i've never come across anybody that's been mean or you know rude about it but CB radio, it's I we had one in the real, real backwoodsy areas. Like I remember we ran into this construction bit in Wyoming, and I just kind of like asked over the CB radio if anyone knew how long it was, and somebody actually gave me an answer. Because like people out there genuinely like pretty much everyone just has a CB in their car because it's just useful. But anywhere else, CB is just a load of garbage. It's just truckers that are. Talking about how they hate the gays and hate the blacks and people blaring music over it and just a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Strip clubs. So, yeah. Oh yeah, there was this one incident where I was listening to a trucker describe some stripper that he knows. Uh, oh my god. Oh. Uh, it's just the crustiest thing. Cr- the crust band is that what you call it? <laughs> the, yeah, the, <laughs> a lot of a lot of radio amateurs call it the children's band. I would call it the crust band. Yeah, it seems crusty. I think it's pretty it, crusty. Papa Bear's on the airwaves. You know, got to pay your respect, to Papa Bear. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, also, <laughs> the the cheesy handles. That's that's real. They all have their stupid Stop. handle. <laughs> What's the dumbest one you've heard? It's just no. It's it's not like they're all dumb like i don't remember any specifically dumb ones it's just they're all as corny as you see in the movies all right like big red i mean it's like really man couldn't come up with anything better than big red <laughs> i mean maybe, maybe he really likes big red gum <laughs> nah he's just in a big red truck that's exactly why he goes with big red <laughs> <laughs> what if like he's chewing big red in his big red truck wearing exclusively red clothing Maybe, dude. Maybe he's got a red fetish. <laughs> Maybe he does. Maybe that's why he stops when he goes to a strip club. Is his truck strip club, you know, first thing he does, put me in a room that is just completely red. Like, I want to be Oof. so red, I can't distinguish things. Like, it's just red. <laughs> <laughs> also, you gotta wonder, like, what do these companies think of the drivers that are out there, like, say, in, the, in their branded truck just out on the highway? I feel like they've just kind of gone numb to it. Like, I feel like this is mean, one thing where it's like, it's... It's just par for the course. Because, like, in a lot of areas, especially with, like, handles like that, you can tell what truck they're in. It's not hard. Hmm. And, like, signal quality. I feel like it's just par for the course. Like, if they also, wouldn't allow oh that, people God, wouldn't work the with truckers them. that go and they, they, they give their CB radios to shops and they pay way too much money for somebody to go in and crank the modulation mm-hmm. all the way up. So what that does is it makes your radio sound terrible. God, like def- okay, define terrible. Like it's super loud, super raspy, or it's just like super loud and like echoey and okay. like it's like barely distinguishable what they say. So it, and like a lot of a but, lot of CB enthusiasts will say like I got my out of the box radio, get on the air, and then somebody's like, "Wow, who tuned your radio? That sounds really nice." I'm like, "Dude, I got it out of the box." Like, so why do they do it? Don't have then? people tune your radio because they think it makes it better, like gives it more range or something. Okay. I don't. So basically, it's like oh, it's a riced out radio. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good way to put <laughs> the it. The guy who has it thinks it's cool. Everyone else thinks it's garbage. Um, let me see. It's other tips. Be conservative with what you pack as far as clothes, because mm-hmm. you're sitting in a car with air conditioning, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, for most of the day, every day. So you don't need a new change of clothes, just like underwear. Yeah. 
And then if you do need to stop somewhere and wash your clothes, I would recommend going to a separate laundromat because the laundromats and hotels are almost always terrible. And overpriced. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, for budget for budget hotels, Motel 6 is, is really the way to go. Um, we didn't... We stayed at them a few times, but not like all the time, not exclusively or anything. You could probably build up rewards points or something with a hotel chain if you were like really into that. We weren't. We were just looking for who was there. That's fair. Um, know that hotel prices are definitely negotiable. Oh, yeah. Everyone always, thinks that's just always. one of those things. Americans are so out of tune with, with uh, haggling and negotiating. You can definitely argue down your price for a hotel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't be rude about it, but you can. Yeah. I'll just be like, if you don't give me this room at ten dollars, and I'm right. gonna like, shank don't, you. Don't be the good bag that rolls in there and like, I want a room change and all this other Perfect. stuff. And like, you treat the, the the front desk person like garbage because they can they can fuck you up, dude. They can give you a room that they know is terrible. Yeah. And also, I think this is general hotel advice. If you if you're going to a destination, scope out a hotel ahead of time properly because this is speaking from experience. Um, when I went to visit the Smoky Mountains, we took a road trip out to Smoky Mountains. I'm in Tennessee, and we stayed. Well, that's really only if you're going to somewhere where there's like yeah. an actual like a main attraction yeah, that's of people. Fair, that's fair. Like, we had problems with this in Kalispell because it's a beautiful place, and we were there in the mm. summer. But if you're just road tripping, generally you wouldn't have a problem finding a hotel. Okay, that's fair. Because they're, they're never fully booked. That's fair. Because I think the way we did it was Unless that you we happen to just roll it across the one town that's like, like having a huge convention yeah. or something. Because I think the way we did it was that we started from Northern Virginia like the morning and managed to get to Tennessee by like sometime in the night. Just like one long drive. And so, um, here's a word of advice. If you're going to Smoky Mountains, it's a beautiful place. What isn't is the little attached tumor known as Dollywood. Dolly Parton's <laughs> own little hellhole. We stayed at a hotel there. Um, we paid a pretty high rate, all things considered, for I think one of the worst rooms I've ever stayed in. It, it was the Holiday Inn near the Wax Museum in Dollywood. Is that- it, our, our, our window literally overlooked a graveyard. And the toilet got clogged. This lady came up, poked it a few times with the plunger said it's broken and left. <laughs> nice. And so the next day we moved to another holiday, which was a bit farther out of town. It was cheaper and so much nicer. Yeah. Instead of overlooking a graveyard, we overlooked a parking lot, which is fine. But like the room was clean. The toilet worked. The, it was wonderful. Just Dollywood is hell. If you live in, I, I forgot, I think it's called Pigeon Falls. If you live near Dollywood, I'm sorry. Like, we went to an attraction there, an attraction, I say with air quotes. They had, they, they, they had was they sold um, water pipes, which happened to look a lot like a certain organ that only men have. And they had a depressed, sad, abused crocodile, or like alligator, and like this really, t- and the tank that was way too small for it. That's not it. It's like it had like a couple inches of water that was dirty and it was tiny, and people just kind of looked at it and tapped Ooh. the glass and made this poor alligator very sad. So, Dollywood is hell. Don't go there. If you live there, so what I'm you're not saying sorry. is you're an advocate for PETA? I'm an advocate for not abusing a fucking alligator. <laughs> like, I think just having an animal in a space that's way too sick, you could tell it was way too small for it. It like almost touched it end to end. It had no space to move around. The water was filthy. That's I think that clearly not a space you put an alligator. We should stop keeping animals in captivity, and I think you should go let your dog and cat free right now. I think didn't it something like that happen with your cat recently, where it got out, and then there was a whole commotion about it. <laughs> yes, but not because PETA reasons. Yes, because we just you know. It's like thoughts regarding lost. PETA aside. Don't don't put alligators in tiny little tanks that are way too small for it. Come on. <laughs> but yes, they're selling water pipes and vases that looked like male parts. But were water pipes uh. and vases and souvenirs and not for the consumption of illicit substances. Um, no illicit substances were consumed in those things, and they're not meant for that. They are, but they're not. <laughs> I find it a lot of places, oh. though. Like, just tourist shops are the worst. <laughs> General travel advice, don't go to tourist shops. Just don't. Yeah. But don't. Look what you're gonna Just pay don't. like thirty dollars for an Outer Bank sticker that you'll stick on your Jeep. No one cares. Oh God. <laughs> if, if you're from like the Eastern Seaboard, you've seen them. <laughs> you've seen the truck, the, the Jeeps with the Outer Bank stickers. You've seen them. You know you have. Don't lie. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yo. Okay. This is this padlock. Mm-hmm. I just picked it 
I, I, I have a, a weird pick. I don't even know what the point of this pick is. It's like a, it's like the end of a hook. Okay. It's, it's like pointy. It's like very sharp, but also it has that little like backwards pointing one. Mm hmm. And the top of it is completely flat, right? So I just shoved the completely flat side against all of the pins and pushed them upwards. And then the lock turned. Master wow. locks are terrible and don't use them. Now they 100% completely know what episode this was recorded right after. But yes. uh, if you can pick a lock with the backside of a flat pick, it's garbage. That's really bad. That being said, this episode of Sleep Trunk is sponsored by Master Lock. Uh, <laughs> that's I just did it again. It's like a reliable <laughs> picking method. I feel like at some point... Also, there's a critical gonna... flaw with these locks mm -hmm. where... The chamber for the pins, like where the spring is, is too large. So if you just push even the pins that the key presses below the shear line, it it'll just open. It, it just the thing looks like a comb. So you just stick it in there, push all the pins down below the shear line, and turn it like a key. It's a bad look. It's a bad look. Don't buy master locks. Yeah. Now, a lot of people suggest that Abus is a is a good alternative. Abus has a lot of locks with the same. Um, with the same flaw. So just do your research. Don't mm -hmm. be brand loyal. Mm -hmm. So getting back on topic, what do you normally bring with you on a road trip? Like, let's say you are packing your just like, like your backpack or whatever. What is in that so, backpack of yours? I had my suitcase mm -hmm. and my brother had a duffel bag, mm -hmm. which was for main luggage. We had a cooler to keep ice and drinks. Mm -hmm. Actually, we had two coolers. We had a large cooler for like all of our you know, extra stuff and a smaller cooler that we would throw right behind the seat that we could access while we were driving. Okay. Like a passenger would just reach back and get, you know, whatever out of that cooler. Mm -hmm. Always bring drinks with you. Yes. You're going to get ripped off if you have to go buy drinks from gas stations all the time. So you just go to a Walmart, get like a huge thing of water, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, we brought uh, fishing gear. So my brother had... Um, this little rack that hung from the ceiling that we put all of our fishing poles on. Mm -hmm. So that got them out of the way and, we, you know, gave a nice secure place to keep them where they couldn't get stolen. Mm -hmm. And then when we, when we stopped, we went, we like pulled them down and then put a blanket over them so that people couldn't see because stuff's expensive. Like yeah, you can yeah. seal it and make money off of it. It's quite easy to break windows. Yes, it is. Um, let me see what else. Actually, uh, we had camping okay. gear. So we had, uh, we had our family tent, which is like a '90s model Ozark Trail tent that's still chugging. What a champ, honestly. It's it's on its last legs. The nylon is very thin, but mm. it still works, and that's what that's what matters. Keep, keeps you um, covered. <laughs> it will it will keep you covered. Maybe not in heavy rain, hmm. but it will keep you covered. It is a place to sleep. Yeah. It will keep the bugs away from you. Uh, see. Also, as I've just recently learned, and I unfortunately did not have them with me on my, my recent trip, but in, like, especially around Glacier National Park, the mosquitoes are awful. Mosquito stickers yes. are the absolute best yes. thing that I've ever used. Bug spray just doesn't work out it's there. I, I, I love to see if mosquito stickers work out there. Mosquitoes are fantastic. I use them all the time here. But like, I have a I have a beautiful photo of um of Bowman Lake in mm -hmm. Glacier National Park, but the um there was a huge swarm of mosquitoes in front of the photo that I noticed after I looked at it in a higher resolution on my laptop that completely ruined it. Uh, that, just a rough. swarm of mosquitoes just chilling there. Yeah, no, yeah, mosquito mosquito stickers are the best. They're they're awesome. And yeah. I'm really surprised I haven't taken off in the States because out here in India, I mean, it's not, yeah, so in India, they are, they're very popular. I think it's also because mosquito diseases here are a lot worse. So people are a lot more like, I'm trying, trying to get bit yeah. because if I experience dengue fever is not good, really sucks ass. I don't recommend it. Not a good time. I mean, Hey, if you want to hallucinate, if you want to hallucinate fever. about a giant mosquito, vomit heavily and have a fever so high you heat up the room you're in go ahead <laughs> that's saying something in india <laughs> oh, oh yeah 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 
And it wasn't even like this was during cold time because actually Delhi does get quite cold. Like in the winters, it can get around forty sometimes. But this was in September, so it was still warm. And yeah, it, get, it gets really hot. You, I, I was I heated up my room. It's it's bad. But yeah, dengue fever is not fun. But if you can get mosquito stickers, uh, you should go for them. And also, actually, a trick I learned it's earlier this week, I think, if you have anything really valuable with you when you're traveling, stick it. If if you so if you keep your spare stored like under your like trunk or whatever, like in like a little pickup bit. If you have, if your car's like that, you know what I'm talking about. You can stick yeah. stuff there. If you have like an expensive yeah, camera or something, you can put it in with your spare. If it's like adequately protected. I always keep my camera out. I, I always have it at the that's ready fair. in case I see anything interesting. Well, if, I, for, if you're doing it for the night or something, or like anything else. It's, it's always with me. Okay, I, I bring fair. it into the room. That's fair. But if you have, I guess anything else. Anything I, else I, I get what you're saying, yeah. But like, for example, like some of the fishing gear, if you have a pole that you can break down, like enough to fit, go for that. Go for it. We just hid money um, like in our suitcases, like inside clothes. Hmm. Actually, it's also a good idea. Um, if you can, what you do is bring an empty shampoo bottle and keep your money in that. Keep backup money in a shampoo bottle. Also, just general space saving tip, just that I remembered. Um, when you're traveling, if you bring multiple pairs of shoes, store your socks in your shoes. Save space and keeps your shoes in shape. They don't get like squishy yep. and stuff. Highly recommend it. I started doing that. I store like my Definitely. socks and underwear in my shoes. I can see what that. other camping gear. If you're if you're camping, make sure to have one of those portable single person air mattresses. They are a godsend. Mm, those are wonderful. Um. I have a, a wonderful sleeping bag that is a discontinued model from LLB and called the burrito bag. Highly recommend it if you can find it. I got a, a good clearance discount on it. We're saying is you're encouraging people to go buy black market burrito bags. I mean, just like eBay. Or or Maybe. you go to a street corner, they see probably, some dude trench coat, and be like, anymore. hey, hey, got, got burrito bags. you be like, I got you, take you to a back room. Like, get a And then bag. a little personal um, chair. I, I have one, like a not the camp chair that I bought at school. It's like a tiny little thing. It's like basically a stool. Okay. But it just gives you something to sit on if you don't have a picnic table. Okay. Let me think about that. Have you ever slept um, in the I car? I have multiple, multiple handheld radios. Um, in case my whenever my brother and I went hiking, um, we both had handheld radios that I had set to the high power mode. That way, if we ever got you know away from each other for a little bit, we could just radio mm -hmm. and contact each other. Okay. Also... Good rule of thumb, if you're ever hiking or anything and you get lost, just stay where you are. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Don't wander. Yeah, yeah. Stay where you are, try, try and get help. But, yeah. Also, have frequencies, it, it, like if you're a radio nerd like me, have frequencies for local forestry people or like if you're in a national park, the park authorities. Hmm. Just, just have them in there so that you can listen to them. And like if they're on a repeater... Program it in so that you can transmit. Don't transmit, but like, just in case you're desperately in need of help. Like you're really. I don't think anyone's gonna prosecute you for violating FCC yeah. laws if you were like gonna die. No, and I think there's legal protections for that too. So definitely with on the ham band. If yeah. you don't have an amateur license but you want to listen, you can still yeah. transmit over the ham radio band. Um, if you're in a dire situation, yeah. and yeah. of course, you can do it anyway. But just like, don't. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Like, no one's gonna find you. But yeah, yeah. But I, I do believe that that should be legally protected. And yeah, but bring a car that's capable of doing everything you need oh, to yeah, do. So like, yeah. definitely bring a roomy car. Mm -hmm. Try to find one with good gas mileage. We we did okay with gas mileage. Also, your mileage goes like down significantly once you start getting on those eighty-five mile an hour freeways. Oh, yeah, because I guess most are optimized for around the sixty to seventy range, right? Like, yeah, about 55 to 60, I think, is what most cars are optimized to run at. That's, like, what their highest High gear speed, runs yeah. at, like, when it's low. Hmm. But I think we did, like, in an Xterra, we got 18, 19. Okay, that's on, on, like, the, the really fast bits. Yeah. So it's not terrible. It isn't great, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and also, you know, and bigger cars just have lower four, mileage. It's a four-wheel drive car, so we were doing some... Not off road, but we were doing some sh sh shaky road places, mm. and we were prepared for it because we had a four wheel drive vehicle. If I recall, the time we went up to Tennessee, we took an MDX, very comfortable. Gas mileage was actually not terrible. We're getting around like I want to say around twenty. I don't remember. It was a while. It was a few years ago, but that that was nice. 
Um, yeah, bring a roomy car. Or what are your thoughts on RVs? Like renting an RV. What are your thoughts on that? Um, don't, because they're gonna be just nasty. You see way too many of them. You look like a tourist. See, like but- the there is this thing for Old Faithful and Yellowstone National Park, and it, the parking lot was just a consortium of rental RVs. Just, <laughs> you just look like a white family, like a white suburban family. You, your mom's name's Karen. She drinks box wine. See, like just oh god. But what if I want to wear a visor and a Hawaiian shirt and force my kids into a space very uncomfortable to go somewhere they don't want to go? That that's the typical suburban yeah. white dad. You don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm I'm assuming if you're traveling with a very large group, it might make sense, like six or seven people. I guess then maybe. Maybe or just like bring two cars. Yeah. Staying but. in an RV is just not. It's like it's not comfortable enough to be, like a replacement for like a full a staying replacement place. for like yeah. like yeah a hotel, but it's also like pussy camping. Yeah. Just bring a tent. Yeah. Like there's a specific reason. Like there's a specific point in my life where I would own a motorhome. That would be retirement. Okay. Other than that, I, motorhomes are just yeah. no. Or alternatively. You get a really nice one, but then you're that guy with the really expensive, overpriced bus of an RV. They're actually you can get good deals on them because people always just like buy them and then never new, use them. and they don't, and then they, they never use them. Yep. So you can just go get like a lightly used RV for cheap because you know people like do that so often that the market's kind of flooded. Or you buy a new one, take it out like half an hour away from your place once, um, show everyone how big your dick is, and then never use it again. Yep, I'm not like big. Like I'm like unreasonably large. You like you put a whole <laughs> propane. Grill if you'd in like there. to do that, there is Camping World, um, just north of Richmond, Virginia, along 95. They have a huge lot of RVs. I'm talking like that lot is absolutely huge. You can go buy a brand new one there. You can go use it once, show everyone how big your dick is, and never touch it again. Yep, yep. and have it just take up an absurd amount of space on your property. Yes. Like I'm talking, like you you build a driveway extension. Like I'm talking, like huge. Like you know, you know the ones I'm talking about. The kind of thing that were yep. like you could reasonably like be a long haul trucker with it if you wanted to. <laughs> like you have enough space in there for a significant cargo of like fish or something. But instead, it's just kind of like empty, <laughs> way too much luggage. Maybe a whole propane grill if you're feeling it, like a full one. You like change it down somewhere. Um, your golf clubs, a lot of Hawaiian shirts, a visor. Um, sunscreen, Your even though it's probably going to be like in the middle of fall, like like really greasy, disgusting sunscreen. Not even like the good stuff, like nasty sunscreen. Um, what else? A fishing rod you're not going to use because you're not good at fishing. Banana boat. <laughs> and it's got to be a horrible fishing rod, right? Like yeah, it can't yeah. be. Like, it can't oh, be quality like, stuff. It's got to. You got to have an ugly stick. Like I'm talking, like maybe something you bought at Walmart that was on the discount yeah, the, rack. The Walmart ugly stick, dude. Like a discount Walmart ugly stick. Like, it was opened partially, so they have to put it on discount. Got a little scratched up. <laughs> yeah. Gotta have a bobber attached, because, like... Yes. And, of course, a really cheap, chintzy one. Every fisherman knows that you're using a bobber <laughs> a really if you're really... A really cheap, chintzy one. Business. The cheapest one you could find. And, of course, the line is, oh of boy. course, tangled up. The line is, of course, tangled up. This is a mess. Right, because you don't actually use yeah. it. It's there for show. Yeah, oh, that like, along yeah, with fish. a very, very large tackle box, like a colossal tackle box with a bunch of stuff in it. You, had, you don't you don't have any idea what any of it is. Like there's like gummy worms in there. Like I don't know, you maybe you, find you, like you, you probably were given it from a from a family member. Yeah. Optimally. That or you bought it with your RV. So you can show everyone that you're you can show everyone yeah, at you the found dock it with your RV. how big your dick is too. Because just in case they don't see your Magnum Dong R V, they can see your jolt colossal like, like I'm talking like military ammunition case tackle box, like huge. <laughs> military ammo cases are actually very useful oh, yeah, to have no, with absolutely. you if you're doing anything on the water because absolutely. like they're sealed, so yeah, they'll absolutely. float if you drop them. No, they're very useful. But I'm, I'm talking the kind they ship like artillery rounds in, like the big stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. Because that's where you gotta keep your tackle. Which even there. Yeah, yeah. But like small, very small mag books. cases are awesome things to oh, have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Anything else we wanna add to this? No, I think this is a pretty good place to stop it. We got we're at a pretty good length. Um, yeah. All right. Hope we helped you. Yeah, Let's yeah. 
It's yeah. kind of a lot of rambling, but I feel like there was some useful information. I think, um, hope we remind you to not be a dick in airports in general, or just in general. Don't be a dick. Yeah, definitely always follow the don't be a dick yeah, rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. And remember, kid, remember everyone, drug your kids. Just a couple of Xanaxes, mix them with juice, like grate into the juice, like bring a little cheese grater. Or gin and juice. <laughs> yes, or, or Beat Snoop Dogg on the world record for largest gin and juice. Yeah. Give it to your kids. I mean, to be, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, you don't want to, you don't want to break the law. You don't want to give them another drink. Just a couple of drugs, you know, not that fake a deal. Just, like, a couple of Zans or, like, to quote um, Drake, Champagne Poppy, as they call him, man who shouldn't be on sure the court, the, but uh, is. make sure the Xanax isn't laced with fentanyl. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. Um, but to quote Champagne Poppy, a.k.a. the man that shouldn't be on the court, but was during the playoffs, um, I, I did half the Xan 13 hours till I land. Your kids are out like a light. Like a light, a like a light slept through the flight <laughs> Not nice 757 I got double bedrooms I still got kosher settlement I crept down the block made a right I don't know that's the song <laughs> I'm really good at memorizing songs yep uh, the sleep drunk podcast can be found on any of your favorite podcasting platforms including Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts Google Play Spotify Stitcher YouTube and more we'll catch you next week catch you next week <laughs>